Would you like to be able to go off-road without worrying about harming the environment? You know, you want a clear conscience because you don't want to drive through a place like this and know that you're chucking out loads of horrible diesel or petrol fumes. Well, you want one of these defenders because they're actually not like a normal Land Rover. You see, underneath their skins, they are powered by Tesla. You've got Tesla motors, Tesla batteries. They are electric. Now, in this video, I'm going to tell you all about their upgrades. I'm going to show you around the exteriors, their interiors, drive them on road, take them off road, and of course, I'm going to launch them because they're electric cars and they're good at launching. Anyway, I'm Matt Watson and you're watching Car Wow. Buying a new car? Then head to Car Wow and my team will help you find your next car at a fair price. Car Wow, your one-stop car buying comparison site. Let's start this video by talking about the price. This thing here, if you want this, £150,000. That one there, about £125,000. And I'm going to break it down for you. Basically, you've got the base cost of your Land Rover Defender. So this is a 2010, that's, that's a 25-year-old one. Then you've got your conversion to electricity, and it works out to about £90,000. And then there's any other extra bits you want done to it, such as winches and interior upgrades and all that kind of stuff. And that's where you are. They're quite expensive but quite unique at the same time. Now, we've got a great new offer through CarWow. You know, you can buy a car through CarWow. Now, you can actually sell your car through CarWow. What you do, you just fill in the details of your car, take some photos, and then you'll get great offers back from our trusted dealers, and you can pick which offer and which dealer you want to sell your car to, and they'll come and collect it and take it away and give you the cash. To find out more, click on the pop-out banner up there to go to CarWow, or simply Google, help me CarWow, and my team and I will help you choose the right car for you and get it for a fair price from one of our trusted dealers, or help you get a fair price for the car you're selling. Now let's talk about the conversion because this is where things get very, very interesting. So rather than a petrol or diesel engine under the bonnet, you've got an electric motor there, underneath, in the centre of the car. Sort of looks like an exhaust silencer, but it's not. So that's the Tesla motor there, and it's attached to two prop shafts, one to the front and one to the back. You've actually got a torque sensing limited slip differential there in the middle, and then you've got one across each axle, not like a normal Land Rover then, because they have open diffs across the axle, only a central locking diff. Bizarre, eh? If the motor is underneath the car, then what is this under the bonnet? Well, the giveaway is this on here. Danger, 400 volts. This is your battery pack. Well, some of your battery pack. The batteries come from a Tesla Model S 100D, and you've got 60 kilowatt hours of your batteries here. I'll tell you where the others are in a little bit, because there's some other things I want to point out here. Look. We've got header tanks for radiators there and there. So this is for the radiator here, which actually calls the motor and inverter underneath the car, whereas there's another radiator here which calls the battery back. Here at the back, in the boot area, you have your remaining 40 kilowatt hours of battery. It actually works out that you end up with the same weight distribution as a normal petrol or diesel Defender with a full tank, because the tanks used to be underneath, I won't say used to be, they are underneath in the old Defender. They used to be on this one. They didn't put the electric battery underneath because apparently it was a bit of a faff to fit it there. So they just put it in here in the boot. This is the thing about Defenders. There's always something to bang yourself off and it doesn't change when you convert them to electric. That hurt. Not only are these Defenders weight distributions the same as the normal internal combustion engine cars, so is the weight believe it or not. So this one weighs two tonnes, which is what it would be if it was the normal four-cylinder diesel. And that one weighs 2.6 tonnes, which is what it would be if it was the normal three-litre diesel. Power's different though. <laughs> 450 horsepower, each of them. 450 newton metres of torque. Much quicker accelerating. Apparently, they can do under five seconds, not to 60, even quicker. And we're gonna find out, because I'm gonna launch them in a bit. But there's some other things I need to tell you. For instance, range is important on an electric car. This one has a range of 200 miles. That one has a range of 150 miles, which is quite a bit less. So why is that? Well, part of the reason is the added weight, but it's also got a load of extras on it, which just cause drag, like that roof rack. And then there's the big knobbly tires as well, which have pretty bad rolling resistance. Something that's really interesting though, is that the range actually increases when you go off-road, which isn't the case with a normal petrol diesel Land Rover. Reason being is that they're not really using that, that much electricity when they're just crawling along. When you're on the motorway and doing higher speeds, that's when electric cars don't perform quite as well as a diesel. So electric, perfect for off-road. There is a slight issue with going electric, and that's that when you rip out your engine, you don't have any pulleys to drive the belt, to drive the power steering pump or the brake vacuum pump. So you have to fit electrical items. So this is an electric power steering pump, an electric brake vacuum pump. And the good thing about those is that they're pretty much maintenance free. 
Another thing that doesn't need quite as much maintenance as on the original Defender is the parking brake. So the old car has a drum brake, which actually clamps onto the prop shaft going out the central transfer case, and it's pretty archaic. And when you go through mud and stuff, it gets clogged up, and then you have to have it cleaned and blah, blah, blah. This doesn't have that system. Instead, it has an electronic parking brake, which is just a little separate caliper on the rear brake disc, which you just engage by pressing this, look. And now it's engaged because it's turned red. Another thing that's different than the normal internal combustion engine Defender is the heater system. Because you haven't got an engine producing all that heat, you have to use a different system. It's basically just like a hairdryer behind the dash. And the benefit of that is that as soon as you turn it on and you put it on to hot, it's hot straight away. You're not waiting for things to warm up. That's good. When this vehicle was diesel powered, that's where the air intake was, but not anymore. It's where the intake is for the electricity. Look, we've got the AC charging port there and the DC rapid charging port there. So you can plug this thing into like a wall box at home and it can take up to 21 kilowatts of AC because it's got three seven kilowatt chargers there and they convert the electricity from AC current into DC current for the battery. Obviously, if you're gonna charge that way, it's gonna take a while, so plug it in. Overnight, it'll be fully charged. If you can find a rapid charger, this vehicle can take 100 kilowatts and then it'll charge from zero to 80% volt in around 40 minutes. Let's talk about the design of these EV Defenders, starting with this one. Now it's known as a Spectre Defender because it's designed to mimic the baddies Defender from the James Bond film Spectre, hence the number plate, 007 spec. Probably quite expensive that. So you've obviously got the tow winch on the front, this big ball bar. It all looks very aggressive. There are a couple of things missing from the car in the film. There's not the rope on the front because when you're driving on the motorway that flaps around and damages the paint and it's all annoying. There's also no snorkel because this is electric, doesn't need a snorkel, and it doesn't have the Austrian number plates because the British police don't really appreciate that. Anyway, moving down the side, you've got wider wheel arches, big chunky tires. You've got your SVX badging there, Spectre edition. The roll cage, the lights on the top, You've got, yeah, what do you call that? Roof rack. <laughs> it's a roof rack. <laughs> yeah, of course it is. I mean, this looks mean, doesn't it? I love those wheels. Now you'll notice these nuts in them. That's because they're beadlock wheels. What you can do with those is that you can let the tire pressures down really low and the tire won't come out because they're locked in by the beads. <laughs> they weren't actually original on the Spectre vehicle, but let's move on. And then here at the back, you have, oh, if I can clamber over this, I'd probably be better driving over it in this off-road. Oh God, I'm going to fall over. I'm, I'm designed for the city, not for the wilderness. Then you've got your badging there. Look, four-wheel drive, electric power. Here on the inside, the Spectre Defender has sport seats and they're trimmed in leather that's quilted. You get leather up here and in the back seats. But other than that, it's just like a normal Defender. So there's room for three people in the back. Now, it is hard to see out the back windows. You have to sort of like kind of lean down to look out. However, this being electric, there are some big differences here in the front. For instance, you don't have a rev counter, you have an amps gauge, which goes up to 12 and then it goes backwards to two, which is when you're regenerating from the motor when you're slowing down. Then there's your motor temperature, then there's the amount of battery you've got remaining, and then your normal speedo and odometer. Big difference is down here. Normally in a Defender, you would have like your gear lever, you'd have one for your transfer box and low range mode, and you'd also have a clutch pedal. But there's none of that, so there's just more room here in the front which is good. Oh, and this is how you put it into gear. Look, you've got drive, neutral, or reverse. That's your lot, easy. You can really see how transforming the car to electric power frees up the space in this topless version of the Defender because it means that you can really use this central front seat. You don't have like, all the gear levers and stuff and someone trying to feel your knee while they're driving. <laughs> Although maybe you'll like that. Anyway, this is actually owned by the chap who's built it and did the conversion on that. His name's Richard Morgan and he owns Electric Classic Cars. And if you want to follow them, I'll put their Instagram in the description and you can contact them through their Instagram. Loads of cool stuff of other conversions that they're doing. Now, that's called the Spectre Defender. I don't know what this one is called. It's surely got a name. Rich, what's the name? Uh, Doris. He hasn't got a proper name for it, so he's just come up with Doris. So if you'd fancy a Land Rover Doris, Contact Richard, Electric Classic Cars. He'll sort you out, but not with naming. Clearly crap at that. 
Now, while Richard might not be great at naming cars, no offense if you are called Doris, by the way, he is good at making them look cool. So with his own personal EV Defender, he's gone for a minimalist retro look. So he's done things like gotten rid of the black surround around the headlights, made it smaller. There's normally a big black square here. He's reshaped the bumper. So this is aluminium and it's just a bit cooler looking than just flat slab-sided one that you get on the standard car. This is actually based on a 1996 Defender, but he's given it the more aggressive looking bulgy bonnet from the later Defenders, which had a Puma engine underneath. It was a bit bigger, that engine, so that to make the space in the bonnet. Now, moving down the side, rather than the big square dormer as you'd have on a 96 Defender, he's given it the cutesy little roundy ones from a Series 2 Land Rover. They'd normally be there, but he's put them there because they're more useful. You've also got the door hinges off a of Series 2. Yeah. The sheep likes it as well. You've also got door design like on a Series 2 Land Rover with a cool little handle. Now, if you move here, you'll see, look at this. So this car actually had the sideways mounted seats, but Richard loves his kids. And if he has an accident, he doesn't want them banging their heads together like that. So he's put the seats facing that way. They're actually front seats, but mounted in the back. Let's come to the rear of the car. Hopefully Lewis, who's filming, won't fall over. Neither will I. So really, once again, it's nice and simple around here. Great colour paint. And instead of the horrible looking fog lights and reversing lights, he's just fitted these little LED ones there. All very nice, all very clean. Looks great. And I think I've just twisted my ankle. Ow. <laughs> Was this on the risk assessment? <laughs> Right, let's take these electric defenders for a drive, starting with off-road. Now, what I'm gonna do is drive two obstacles in this Spectre Defender, then I'm gonna switch over into the Doris Defender, and then drive two other obstacles. Normally, if I was off-roading, I'd be putting it into low range mode now, and uh, yeah, no low range, no gearbox, no nothing. I'll just release the parking brake, and then accelerate, and apparently I've gotta be quite gentle with no. I do have to put it into drive I've got this <laughs> you have to be quite gentle with the throttle because being electric it'll just give you instant power <laughs> and you could just shoot into the ditch which is going to be good well that's weird now normally I wouldn't hear all these rattles and squeaks as the body flexes in a traditional diesel defender because that diesel motor will be going <laughs> Whereas there's nothing, it's just a silent electric motor. It's quite weird, actually. Right, I'm gonna check out the chassis articulation and ground clearance. I'm on big, big tires, so I should be absolutely fine. Oh, it's easy. I'll let the wheel just go where it wants to go. You can really control it, actually, because when I lift off the accelerator, I get regen braking, which slows the Defender down, so I'm not having to touch the brakes. It's, it's just simple. That was easy. Took it all in its stride. Now we come into the second obstacle, and this is about traction. This electric Defender does have a traction control system, which will just prevent it spinning up its wheels like crazy. The knobbly tires give you good grip when you're off-roading, especially if you go on mud. Oh. <laughs> oh, this is just coiling up here so easily. You can quite easily control the power with your right foot. You do feel like a duck, duck, duck feeling, which I thought at first might be the powertrain, but it's not. It is just those knobbly tires as you go off the blocks of the tires. Now, one of the big questions people have about these electric off-roaders are, well, what happens when you know you want to go through some water? Can, can they actually go through water or will you get this nasty big electric shock? After all, you've got your 400 volts, haven't you, to worry about? Well, the electrical system from the Tesla is all waterproof completely waterproof. The only concern is the old 12 volt electrics, which you need for like your interior stuff, like your radio. That's old Land Rover, so that can get a bit wet. But technically, if you didn't worry about that, you could drive this thing underwater, because obviously it doesn't need any oxygen. Whereas with an all Defender, you can't, because it's got to get oxygen, hasn't it? Okay, so we're coming to some gnarly looking rocks. I'm gonna try and put my front wheel onto the smaller part of this rock here, and then work my way onto this bigger one. There we go. Come on. Oh, I'm surprised just how easy it is to control the power. I thought it'd be harder, but it's so easy. It's unbelievable. <laughs> it's simple. Wow, it's quite easy for a novice. 
I've now jumped into the Doris and this one has an off-road mode which softens the throttle pedal response so that you don't spin at the wheels when you're off-roading. Not that there's a problem in the other one. Let's have a little look at this. Let's release the parking brake and off we go. Oh yeah, you can really feel it. It's a lot more progressive. All you can really hear is some creaks and rattles from underneath and the slight whine from the electric motor. And you can enjoy the twitter of the birds. Oh, this is so good. I love this steering wheel. Let's go up this bit here. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, yes. <laughs> this is lovely to drive. <laughs> Lots of wheel twirling going on. We've got hydraulic power steering, but obviously it's assisted by an electric pump rather than a pulley off the engine. So you do get lots of feel and kick back through the wheel, which is good when you're off-roading and bad if you have your thumbs in there because then you could get broken. The old thing with off-roading is to have your thumbs on the steering wheel like that. The last thing I'm going to do in Doris is show you the hill descent control. Look, look. I haven't got my feet on the brakes. We're using Regen to slow us down as we descend. Now, the new Land Rover Defender will nibble at its brakes to take you down a hill slowly, whereas this is just using pure Regen effect from the motor, and it's quite extreme in this mode. But look how slow it's taking me down. And while that's happening, I can feel very smug about the fact I'm recouping energy and putting it back in the battery, you know, keeping old, eco-friendly. Oh, that's a lot of fun, that is. But do you know what? I'm actually going to put it into on-road mode again. And instantly I can see that the regen has reduced, so it's not so aggressive on the braking. But there is one thing that is more aggressive, and that is the throttle response. So check this out, right? This is why you don't <laughs> want full throttle response when you're off-roading, because this happens. Blimey! <laughs> That's utterly nuts. What I need to do now is feel what this car is like when it launches on proper tarmac and you've got full traction because i want to see what not 60 time this car can do i'm loving driving it around off-road it's really cool no engine sounds ruining the atmosphere or the serenity but i want to know how quick this car will go from 0 to 60. so let's get and launch it right let's see what this thing can do 0 to 60. specialist timing gear here i'm just going to floor the throttle see what we get let's do it Right, here we go. <laughs> that was a fall. <laughs> oh, it's enough to send it bonkers. <laughs> now let's just drive it sensibly. <laughs> I'm dribbling down my face. <laughs> it's got the wind and just the hilarity of it. Well, you do get blown about quite a bit, not having any <laughs> roof on, which is fine when it's dry like it is at the moment, but if it rains, not so much fun. Let's see what it's like round a corner. I'm guessing it's rather like a normal old Land Rover, so easy does it. I am acutely aware that the flex of my right foot could have serious consequences. Well, yeah, it'll understeer pretty quickly. <laughs> Whoa! But, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god this is so much fun it's actually quite strange just driving it normally because you've got that insane power very little noise apart from the wine from the motor when you're stationary you can hear like the heater and the pumps for the power steering and the brakes whirring away which you wouldn't do in the normal car because it would just be that diesel engine drowning out any other sounds hopefully you can hear me with all the wind buffeting but this is just epic i'm gonna have to do it again this is uphill. And I'd struggle for traction there. <laughs> this is uphill and it still does a 4.37. This is a lot of fun. I just picked cameraman Lewis up now. Let him have a go in it. Come on, cameraman Lewis, jump in quickly. Jump in. You ready? You're holding on. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, I'd like one of these. Can't afford one, but I'd like one.
So then, what's my final verdict on these two electric Land Rover Defenders? Well, do you know what? I really like them. I'm surprised how well electric works off-road. It gives you loads of control. It's good on-road as well for that added performance. Would I buy one? Yes, I would, if I could afford one, but I can't. If you can, though, you should check out Electric Classic Cars. It's in the description. You'd have something unique. Even the sheep. Does the sheep love them? See? Is this still rolling? Ah! You've done it. I've done it. I knew that would happen. Honestly, there's always bits in old Defenders that are just out to get your blooming bony bits, I'm telling you. Let's, uh, you to, to get this into neutral, push them together. I thought you were going to tell me about how to stop you hurting yourself then. <laughs> anyway, I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like. Uh, let me know some of the videos you want in the comments below. And if you click up there, you can watch some more videos. And if you click there, you can get a car wide to see how much money you can save on a new car. Or see how much you can get for your old car that you're trying to sell. Go check it out.